Yep. This has the chance to take Mario down. It's a cautionary tale. Hi fellas, Leah's here. You know, I was having a conversation about cheese sandwiches. Which one better, grilled or toasted? But turns out they were a lactose intolerant team because they got gassy from just talking about it. You know what's worse than disagreeing with someone? Aggressively agreeing. Dude, why are you upset? I said your game was awesome. Yeah, but you're not getting naked. But I'm not even doing that over my game. Then you're not doing it properly. It's a tale as old as time. The console wars is one of the longest recorded scuffles in history beyond Greek mythology. But it also comes down to what game is better, not just from rival consoles, but within the console itself. Every company has their big mascot. Nintendo has Mario, Sega has Sonic. But have you ever heard the phrase thought to be the first mascot or just secondary mascot? For the second Master System, we got the first attempt at taking Nintendo down. Give it a minute. It wasn't the best plan to pit a 2D shooter against the biggest platformer at the time, especially when platformers were the rage, so back to the drawing board. So okay, a platformer made by Sega, but this one will be special. You can go down in more ways than one. Alex Kidd, maybe. Yeah, well in Japan they got this pretty cool representation, in America they got a participation trophy. But about the game itself, it's good. You punch and swim around, collect stuff and buy items. Hell, you even get a writing section with 17 levels in total. I'd say that's fantastic for a first attempt, I like this. So let's see what they did next. It's a cautionary tale. You know how there are 6 Mega Man games on the NES? and the GBA, but they always added new things on top to spice up the gameplay. Sega just looked at Mario and said, Psh, I can do that. And it went downhill from there. From a simple platformer to a racing game, it just didn't manage to catch the same magic that the first game did. I mean, Sega thought it would be the next big thing to milk on toast, and yes, the first game is good and all, but it just didn't save the game industry. Oh, so moving on to the next generation, they took a page from the book of Bill Clinton, and a few redesigns later, we got her, yeah. Sonic the Hedgehog. He was not only the answer to Mario, but to Alex Kidd himself. He was faster, had the personality of a 90s teenager, still stuck in the 90s, and the game was built around speed. Well, mostly. Yeah, Sega still decided to include stages with slow platforming elements, but still managed to capture the attention of the fans, but also the competition. Sonic was huge for years, and that's something that couldn't be said about Alex. If we look at their first iterations, you can find a lot of enjoyment from both sides. Hell, I could see Alex be one of the pillars of the company if Sega just decided to improve on the first game rather than change it every time. Just look at Sonic, with every sequel the formula kept getting better, eventually reaching its peak with the third game. Fourth game. So even though Alex Kidd and Medical World is a fantastic game, Sonic 1 just takes the cake for its long-lasting legacy and cool level design. Even if you have to replay it like 20 times to memorize where to jump and not lose momentum. The trademark of the series. And speaking of console wars, one of the biggest competitions came down to Sonic 1 and Super Mario World, which <laughs> sucks, right? The game has so many stages, an interconnected world, special more difficult stages, and uh, Yoshi. Sonic 1 didn't even have Tails to begin with, but it still managed to get fans hooked up waiting for the sequel, which, to be fair, really goes above and beyond what the first game set in motion. Sonic 2 improved on the first one in just about every aspect, from graphics and speed to level design and gameplay. Having your friend Tails not just as a second player, but also helping Sonic with his flying abilities by, yes, twisting his ass apparently? Now this is what I call a competition to Mario World. You even get the Chaos Emeralds to commit copyright infringement. Of course, Nintendo wouldn't stand for that, and later on released Super Mario All-Stars, a compilation of all the classics on the NES, plus the unreleased Japanese version of the second game, becoming one of the most beloved games ever. Hell, by having Mario 3 alone was more than enough, but they gave us 4 whole ass games to play around with. What if the perfect 16 wouldn't stand for that and then release Bonk 3, Bonk's Big Adventure? <laughs> then Sega had to step up their game and start working on the third entry, but sadly they didn't manage to finish on time, so the first half came out of Sonic 3 and the expansion, which is a game in itself, came out later that year, Sonic and Knuckles. When you play each game separately, yeah, they're pretty neat, but a bit short, but when combined, ugh, oh, Carbonara just... Mm. <laughs> Now this is what those in private adult clubs call the best Sonic game, period. Now you have three playable characters, super version of each, hypersonic, and a whole bunch of levels that just seamlessly connect with each other, for the most part. It feels like one continuous stage that keeps evolving, ugh. Now this has the chance to take Mario down. Wait, what's that? Oh my god! It's the mirror of a city, apparently. Yeah, Nintendo just had to release the Donkey Kong Country trilogy to Donkey Kong Sega just as they were getting traction. Rare went full throttle with the outstanding pre-rendered 3D graphics, incredible level design, and music that's just thick. 
and just the first entry alone became one of the best-selling games of that console generation. So then we pit Sonic 3 and Knuckles against Donkey Kong Country 2, the obvious pick of the trilogy. Now this one is tougher than the last comparison because there's basically no drawbacks for each game. Both are incredibly fun, cool gameplay, rocking music, and they look beautiful at every point in the game. But Bites. And the amount of stages in DKC2 just pushes the game forward for me. However, once again, if you were to go for Sonic 3 and Knuckles, you know what? That's a damn good choice because the game is just badass. Being able to play stages that you once were unable to with Sonic and Tails, it really feels like a video game expansion before that was even a thing. Now, we can continue like that until the end of time, but I just wanted to give an introduction to how big games are often compared upon different companies. And that still goes to this day. Just think back when God of War came out to revolutionize sequel reboots and sell the Breath of the Wild to evolve open world games and um uh, Ori. But now I wanna quickly go over some games within the same company, hell, even from the same developer that people can't stop comparing to this day. And to begin, one of my favorites, Square Soft. Oh! No no, not yet. Even to this day, no part will give in as to which game is superior, even if in itself is a silly argument to begin with. It's not about being the best RPG ever made, but the best game ever made. And those bastards getting a dime out of me, only my two cents. We all know these two games, some of the finest RPGs ever crafted, made with love and passion from the developers, with stories so good, it's crazy to think how they managed to pull all this off, and just sublime gameplay with tactics on how to get the best out of your teams. Some might say that these things were improved with other games later down the line, but just the fine details and the importance of the side stories for each character, I mean there's a reason why people still quote these games as the benchmark. But this is my opinion, and I would argue that having less characters to focus on helps Chrono Trigger develop its main characters even more, even for its side characters. Also, by the end of the game, almost every character in Final Fantasy VI ends up being the same, with the same spells and all. Let's be honest, you all thought them Ultima and just broke the game, but in Chrono Trigger, the ultimate spells aren't all these bombs that just cover the whole screen. Marley has life too to revive a partner with full HP, and Ayla has the triple kick that focuses on one enemy. And just with double and triple attacks, you have no wrong combination. You can go for a magic balanced team, or just go hog wild, dealing as much damage as possible. Especially with the new game plus. Holy sh I almost forgot about that! Yeah, Chrono Trigger created the very concept of New Game Plus, starting again with everything that you got on the previous run. And you even get different endings depending on when you decide to face the final boss. That's just awesome! Even today, some games have the New Game Plus, but only to play the game on easy mode, basically. But nothing else. That's how high Chrono Trigger set the bar for others, not just RPGs. So that's why I have to put it slightly above Final Fantasy VI. But do not think that I don't love the game. It's my second favorite in the series, and that's saying a lot, believe me. Hopefully they bought it. Staying for a bit on a Super Nintendo, how about the classic question? What's better, Mario or Mario? Your question is Luigi. Super Mario Bros. 3 vs Super Mario World. Now this one's funny because people cannot stop beheading each other which 10 out of 10 is actually a 10 out of 10. Ah, good news, they can fix it! I've already mentioned how fantastic both games are and the Mario Land 2 game doesn't appreciate the slander. But just to break the tie on the case, Mario 3 has the better power-ups and Mario World has the better levels and gimmicks. Also, it doesn't have this stage. Still haunts me to this day. Shit. And I have to be honest, it's hard for me to decide which is better and I'm not being biased because I beat Mario World more times than I can count and I played Mario 2 more than 3 on the All-Stars version, but as an adult, I've replayed Mario 3 the most out of the 2D games, so I'm not shitting on the game. That's Sega's job. So okay, if I were to pick one at gunpoint... No, come here. Thank you. I'd say Mario World. Dude, you missed! For the next generation, we got a curious case going on for the N64. We all remember sitting down and playing party games with our siblings and friends. It was fun fighting and taking a sh** on each other. It hasn't stopped. So I have a combo of two fights here. Mario Party 2 vs 3 and the wild card Mario Kart 64 vs Diddy Kong Racing. I try not to extend this one too much, but to summarize, Mario Party 2 has the costumes and Mario Party 3 has multiple item slots. More chances to f your friends over Party 3 wins! And now the racing games. Now this is funny because out of the two, only Diddy Kong Racing has a story mode and different modes to play with carts, hovercrafts and planes. With that alone, you think I'd give it the advantage? But see, one of the benefits of Mario Kart that makes it so fun are the power-ups. Sure, in Diddy Kong Racing you have missiles, oil, speed boots, a shield and a magnet. That's a special one. Mario, on the other hand, has green shells, red shells, blue shells, mushrooms, golden mushrooms, thunders, bananas, fake item boxes, stars, boo, Jesus. And it only got crazier from there. 
And also these stages feel more chaotic, which, yes, if you try to beat the game by yourself, it's a nightmare, but with friends? God, everyone sucks! Marker wins! Another classic feud within the same console comes from the PS2 era, and this is a three-way fight. God of War 2, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater, and Shadow of the Colossus. These three are completely different genres. Kratos 2 is an action-adventure with awesome visuals, gameplay that keeps expanding as you go through the story, and an epic soundtrack. There's multiple areas to move around and secrets to uncover, and yes, you saw it here first, folks, we got tits! Snake Eater is a stealth shooting game with one of the best stories ever told, widely regarded as one of the best in the series, again with awesome music and one of the best boss fights in history. That's right, the latter. Man, this game has so many small details that even to this day people are finding out like, did you know that Konami made the game? It's nuts, right? Shadow is a boss gauntlet with a story that's not laid out for you, but when everything clicks, you realize how deep the rabbit hole goes and that you're not the hero of the story here. It doesn't have the flashiest gameplay and it can be a little tricky, but when you see it as a puzzle action game and just get how to approach each encounter, ah, it's just so satisfying when you take down each titan and you're this tiny ass back in comparison, it's fantastic. So, which one would I pick as my favorite? Well, the one I played the most is God of War 2, the one that impacted me the most was Snake Eater, and the one that shocked me the most was Shadow of the Colossus by how well they told the story without that much dialogue. Shadow is third. I'm sorry, I guess I'm not the biggest fan of empty open worlds, even though it's all about absorbing this land as you approach your next challenge. And it is one of my favorite games on the PS2, but the other two are just on another level. Speaking of which, which one of you two sucks? Because when it comes to characters, both are awe-inspiring, mainly because of their growth during the rest of the respective series, but for my initial impression, I'll go with Snake Eater. To that, I also had to add those cutscenes with the Metal Gear exposition that just makes the whole situation more tense and grand. Ironic, because the other is literally about Greek mythology, but whatever. Moving on to the next generation, let's talk Xbox. You guys like the Xbox, right? It's always third place. Ah, oh, it's so... relatable. Of course, the biggest name for the company is Halo, and arguably the greatest game in the series is Halo 3, which I got to play just a few years ago, and you know what? It's in my top 10 now, of games that... The hell? This is good? Oh, and another game on that list. Yep, my penis is long, fellas. Both games are FPS with sublime gameplay and action set pieces, and some of the most badass characters ever. Captain Price, this man can solo an orgy of one if he wanted, and Master Chief is the overall definition of a selfless hero. I cannot believe that I, someone who loved the FPF games for a long while, now find this series just fascinating. Granted, I stopped playing after Modern Warfare 3 and Halo Reach. After all, the story was finished, there was nothing else to tell, no need to continue, stop. Each game is divided into chapters located in different areas with the possibility of multiplayer, fun gunplay, or punching grunts in the face, you little bitch. But overall, which one takes the cake for me? Well, if I was smart, I would say Halo 2, but for this one in particular? I go for Halo 3, but not by a long shot, mind you. I guess the story impacted me much more, even though, again, I love Captain Price's tenacity and strong will to end the war. It was marvelous. But Halo's was an intergalactic fight, and Master Chief just went a little bit beyond for me. Sure wish it would've ended there, though. For the 8th generation, we had another three-way tie, and for RPGs again. I am not gonna sleep tonight. Welcome, Romo, to our show! Pick! Oh, winner! Hello, my name is Rose Beef, and here we are a lucky contestant! Contestant number one, with an expansive open world, incredible story based on a series of books with branching paths, cool battle system, and beautifully written characters, we have The Witcher 3! Contestant number two, with one of the most refined gameplays, tough as nails, but rewarding difficulty, and one of the most detailed and jaw-dropping worlds ever brought to life, we have Bloodborne! And for contestant number 3, we have a game that took me 80 hours, for god's sake, was that really necessary? We have Persona 5! Game's really good though. And now, our lovely... Just pick one. So this one's tricky, we have two action games and one turn base, which, I mean, that alone... Yep. Also, to be honest, Witcher 3 has the best story, and Bloodborne, I don't even fucking know what happened, but it was great. That should be the tagline for the company. And Persona 5, I just had so much fun playing through, the characters are neat, and it felt calming spending time between dungeons just being a regular kid and hanging out with friends. But I had to take a break every 3 dungeons, man. It was basically 10 hours each, that's just the whole game right there. So, what do I pick? To get the hell out of here, there are sure gears in the show! Which leaves us with the latest generation of consoles. Ah! 
Of course! The obvious! Boy, this one is as big as it's ever been. How can we even get to an agreement on these two? They are both giants. Odyssey took the gameplay of 3D Mario to a whole new level, so much so that it was even adapted to the Bowser Sphere expansion. It set the bar really high for any other platformer. And Breath of the Wild, I mean, it basically created its own genre of cheap clones at this point, with a huge open world with so many things to do and interact with. But still, it feels different to a sandbox game. It's just a Zelda game now. I could spend like an hour talking about these two games alone and it still wouldn't be enough, because there's so many small details, but when it comes to which one I had the most fun with, I would have to go with Zelda. In general, it's one of my favorite Nintendo franchises to begin with, and just a little parenthesis, my favorite 2D Zelda is A Link to the Past, and I love the freedom that you can reach in that game after a while, so having that freedom in this game to begin with, that's just the best decision they could have made, and I'm glad they stuck to that. Twice. So that was a peaceful conversation, I even went to a dating show! But there's still so many game rivalries to talk about, like Final Fantasy VII vs Final Fantasy IX, MGS3 vs MGS4, Ocarina of Time vs Majora's Mask, all of the Pokemon generations, Golden Sun vs Castlevania Area of Sorrow, Uncharted 3 vs The Last of Us, Batman Arkham Asylum vs Arkham City, DBC Budokai 3 vs Tenkaichi 3... Oh, already started! Yeah, I prefer 9! 